you guys have asked so much for me to do a video on my LUT and color grading workflow. So that's what we're doing today. We are going to break down exactly how I grade every single shot that you see in my videos. So let's jump straight in and take a look at a bunch of different shots that I'm going to be grading using the same process. And the process I use is a combination of different LUTs and different curves to easily and very quickly adjust and grade footage. And you'll see what I'm talking about once we get the initial setup done. I'm gonna be using Final Cut, but you can use any software because all you need is some way to adjust curves and some way to apply LUTs, which is pretty much anything out there. And the main thing you need to pay attention to is the order of those curves and LUTs. So let's go ahead and get things set up here in Final Cut. I'm going to hit Command-7 to bring up my scopes and waveform. If you don't know what those tools are, I've done a whole video on it that you can check out, and I would highly recommend it. They're super powerful. I'm also going to hit Command-4 to bring up the inspector in Final Cut, and finally Command-5 to bring up the effects, which is how we can add effects to our footage. Now we're going to set up all of the different LUTs and curves, and you only have to do this once because we can create presets so that later you just one click and all your stuff shows up. So I'm going to grab this custom LUT here, drag it on this first shot. I'm gonna do it twice, so now we have two custom LUTs up here in our inspector. I'm going to search for curve and add color curves here. And once applied, you can see it's added color curve one here in the inspector. I can actually double click that, which will take me to the color tab, click on this drop down, and here I can add even more options. So I'm going to continue adding color curves. So there's our second color curve. I'll go in and click our third color curve. Now when we go back to the inspector, we have two LUTs and three curves. Now we're gonna reposition these things because it's very important to have uh, things or nodes or effects in the correct order. So I don't want all of these curves at the very end after my LUT. So I'm gonna take the color curve one, put it at the very top, color curve two, put it just after color curve one, and I am going to take color curve three and put it in between these two LUTs. So at this point we have two curves, a LUT, a curve, and a lot, and that is the main setup for every single one of my shots. Again, you can go down here and hit save effects preset once you've done your grade, and now you can just with one click do all of this for all your shots. We'll take a look at that here in a second. All right, so now we need to assign some stuff. So this is just a blank set of LUTs. There's nothing here. Our curves haven't been adjusted. So the first thing I'm going to do is uncheck our first curve. That is going to be correcting for white balance issues, so you don't always need it, but I wanna have it here for when we create our preset. Next, I'm gonna go down to color curve number two, double click it, and I'm going to not touch these color curves here, but actually just our Luma curve at the top. And this is gonna look insane, but bear with me. I'm gonna put a point right in the middle here, drag it way down and off to one side a little bit, actually off to the right side, right at around 60%. So here's 50, this line right in the middle. We're gonna go off to the side and we're gonna make it really insanely dark. So it looks insane, but we don't have to worry about that because we're gonna be using this mix slider at the bottom to adjust things. So I'm gonna just set it to one for now. We'll go back to our main screen. With that set up, we can now set our first LUT. So currently it's set to none. Here you can see all of my LUTs that I've installed. And if you wanna install your own, you go to the very bottom here, you reveal and finder, and you can install or add whatever folders and LUTs you want. The LUT I'm going to be using is my S-Log3 to Rec 709 LUT, which is available in the description. And we just updated it with some cool stuff. So you can check that down below. So for me, that's going to be in this Pike S-Log3 folder. And you'll notice there's a ton of different stop shifts I can apply. I'm not gonna get into that. All that is covered on a different page where I sell my LUT. So you can check that out in the description. For now, I'm just gonna choose this 00 base LUT. Now you can see things are very dark because we have that first curve turned on. I'll turn that off for now. And as you can see, it's a little overexposed because I overexposed my footage on purpose so that I can bring things down in post and reduce noise. And if you're interested in exposure, let me know. Maybe I'll do a whole series of videos here on YouTube talking about that. But for now, we're just gonna leave things alone and move on to our next LUT. So we're gonna skip our color curve three and go to the second LUT. Here, I'm going to choose the color boost LUT which is a LUT that I also include with my LUT pack. So it comes with the Sony LUTs, and you'll notice it's incredibly strong, but that's again okay, because we're gonna use this mix slider to get things set up. So for now, we're just gonna uncheck it, but now we have all of our LUTs and curves set up. 
now we can go through the grading process and our color correction. So let's just clean things up by completely unchecking everything. Here is our log footage. The first thing I want to do is convert it to Rec 709. So all we have to do is turn on our first slot here, which is going to take S log 3 and convert it to Rec 709. As we can see, it's a little washed out and it's a little overexposed. So we're going to turn on our second curve here, which is just before the LUT. And as you can see, it's very dark, but that's okay. We can double click on that curve, scroll to the bottom and under mix, go all the way to zero and slowly correct the shot. And you can see on the left hand side of the screen, as I adjust things, our waveform is showing us what's happening. So we're just going to bring it down, you know, something like that looks pretty good. And I can turn it off and back on and we can see we've now brought down the exposure. And it's very important to have this curve before our conversion LUT because we want to adjust levels and then have the LUT convert to Rec 709. So make sure that LUT where you're adjusting your exposure or your luminance is before your conversion LUT. So now we have exposure or luminance kind of set up. Next, we're going to go down and I'm going to turn on our colored curve number three. This curve is designed to kind of finish off my highlights and my shadows. So I'm pretty happy with the overall luminance here, but you'll notice on the waveform here that, you know, nothing's really white and it's kind of washed out. So I'm going to go into color curve number three and use the Luma curve here. And you can see if I grab the black point, it's going to pull it down. Now, I don't like going all the way to zero, which is black. I like things right around three IRE. And you can see in Final Cut, there's this little bar that you can move around. And I have mine set to three for this very reason. So I'll bring things down to around three and you don't have to go to three or black if your image doesn't have anything that's really black. So in this particular scene, there's no true black. So I don't even have to go that far down, but it is a little washed out. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit, something like that. And the same for the highlights. Is there anything white in the scene? Not necessarily, but the sky is going to be very bright. So I'm going to grab my white point and bring it up. You can bring it all the way up to just before it hits 100 and then I'll back it off just a little bit. So now we have our, you know, blacks and whites kind of set up so I can uncheck this and you can see before and check it again to see after. Okay, so now we have our blacks and whites dialed in. Now let's deal a little more with color and saturation. So if we look at this image, it's pretty good, but it's a little flat. And that's the way I like my LUTs and how I've designed them is to not be super strong because I like to independently deal with saturation and boosting color. And that's what this color boost LUT is for. So this comes with my LUTs. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And as you can see, it's incredibly strong and I designed it that way as well. So the idea is you apply this thing and you drag the mix or the strength all the way down to zero. Then you introduce some color boost until you find something that you like. Normally I am around a quarter or 0.25, actually 0.26 is usually what I find myself doing. So if I turn it off, this is what the image looks like before I've applied this color boost LUT. And if I turn it back on, there it is. Now what I love about this LUT is it's not just saturation, it's actually boosting colors, but it will kind of ignore things that are already desaturated. So if you have a gray wall or a white wall, and if there's just a little bit of color there, it's not going to bring that up a lot. It's mainly going to focus on things like skin, grass, trees, and whatnot. Another way to think about this is if you're coming from Resolve, it's very similar to Resolve's color boost, hence the name. And at this point, I would be happy with this image. So now that we've done one image, we can actually create a preset and just dump this across other shots and make slight adjustments. So what you can do in Final Cut is go down here to save preset and once selected, you can choose what things in your image you want to save. For example, I don't want to save the transform because this is an anamorphic shot. We only want to save this stuff here at the beginning and you could hit save. I've already done this. So let's go ahead and use it on another shot and we'll run through the exact same process. So here on this particular shot, we've got another S log three log footage. Let's go ahead and here under the pike folder in my effects, I have base log S log three. So I'll drag that on and just like that, it populates all those things we created created on our last shot. So let's run through grading this particular shot. It looks pretty good, but I can see some things I would like to change. So the first is it's a little overexposed. So I'm going to go to that second curve. We'll go in, we'll scroll down and we'll bring that down a little bit or increase the opacity or strength of this particular curve. Something like that looks pretty good to me. So now we'll go back. We will double check our black and white points. So we're going to go to that last color curve 
and looking at the waveform here, I'll just start to kiss the three IRE, and we'll bring it up a little bit when it comes to our highlights. Last but not least, color boost. We'll check that. It's already at 28, and I'm pretty happy with that. So this is looking pretty good. I have noticed, however, that my hands look a little red um, or a little too pink. So because I designed these LUTs, I have added a skin shift in them. So instead of using the zero, zero stop base LUT, I'm going to add skin two. And just like that, you can see my skin is a little more orange and more on the skin tone line and not as pink. So I can undo that, go back to the original shot, and then I'll switch back to that skin shift. And if you wanna learn more about the skin shift and all the other features in my LUTs, there will be links in the description and you can learn more about that stuff in depth. So I'm really happy with that shot. Let's go to another one that has some more issues and we'll kind of do some more advanced stuff. So let's go with this one here. And what we're gonna do is start with a base gray. This is a V-log log profile. So I'm gonna use my V-log preset. One thing we're noticing right away is that things are a little magenta and the white balance looks off, at least to me. So we'll get to that here in a second, but first let's run through our traditional setup. Uh, honestly, this is looking pretty good out of the gate. So if we wanted to, we could go in here and adjust you know, our exposure on that second curve, but that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and jump down to our last curve check our black point, which is already pretty good. And I'll bump the white up a little bit to have those highlights really close to 100. Color boost is fine. It's a little high, I guess we'll drop it down to 26. And then finally, we're going to deal with this white balance issue. So what I'm going to do is switch my vector scope or waveform rather over to an RGB overlay. So now we're seeing red, green, and blue overlaid. And a great way to deal with white balance issues is to find neutral colors in the shot like blacks, grays, and whites isolate them and see what the scopes are telling us. So a great way to do this is in the effects here, I'm going to search for a mask and I'm going to use the draw mask, drag it onto our shot and I'm going to click and kind of use my wife's black jacket, the white cap of this water bottle and this person's gray clothing here. So let's go ahead and mask. The goal here is no color. We don't want any color in this. So we don't want to get this green or this red or yellow. I'll connect them together. Now we've got a nice mask. And now you can see over in the waveform, we definitely have some things going on. There's a lot of blue. See how blue is higher than the other colors? That lets us know we need to adjust this. So this is where that first curve comes into play. The one that we've had deselected this whole time. If you have a shot that has some color issues, now's the time to turn it on, double click it, and we can go in and start making some tweaks. So when it comes to dealing with these kind of issues, all we have to focus on is our red, green, and blue and where they should land at different levels. So if we look at the waveform here, we can see that blue is a little high, red's a little low, and green is right in the middle. Down at the bottom here, it's kind of similar. Blue is a little high, green is a little low that time. So we're just gonna make those adjustments. So I'm gonna start with blue. So let's grab blue up here at the highlights, and you can see if I move it around, we're moving that blue point on the waveform. So let's bring it down until we hit blue over green, which looks to be right about there. Now I'm gonna use red and bring that up a little bit to be with the other two colors. Looks like that is pretty good. So now it's really nice and dialed in. If I turn this off, you can see what it was before and back on. Now let's deal with the low part of the image. And it looks like green is a little higher than red and blue. So I'll bring that down. And what we'll do is go back to the main inspector and turn off our draw mask. Next, we'll turn off our first color wheel here and see what it was like before and after. So as you can see, it looks a lot better. It's still not quite perfect and it's a little too greener the other direction now. So what I'm gonna do is double click on it, scroll to the bottom, just grab that mix and just turn it all the way off and then slowly back on. And now you can see we have isolated our color issue to just this color curve. So somewhere in the middle there looks pretty good to me and our scopes are definitely looking a lot better. So that is how you can deal with some white balance issues and going in and manually tweaking your curves, looking at your scopes to see what's going on. And if you don't have any issues at all with your color, you just turn this thing off and you just don't use it. And that's what's nice about this system is if it's needed, we can go ahead and turn it on and tweak it. Otherwise, you just don't mess with it. Okay, so that's the system. Now let's even add some more complexity. Let's say there's some issues in the image that we'd want to address. There's one more filter that you could add to this kind of collection of effects to do even more. So let's deal with this shot here. I've got my wife here, it's an anamorphic shot. We're gonna go ahead and apply our base grade. So again, that's going to be under my pike folder where I've created this base grade for S-Log3. We'll dump that on, 
It's already looking pretty good, but there's a lot of blue haziness here from this anamorphic lens, and it doesn't look that good. But first we're gonna do our base grade. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a look at uh, my exposure or luminous levels right about there. It looks pretty good. We'll go back here, take a look at our black and white point. That's the last curve here. Whoops, I forgot to reset my scope. So I'm gonna go to waveform here and choose Luma. That's gonna be a lot nicer. I'll bring down the black point a little bit and boost the whites a little bit. This shot is clipped, so I might as well make the sky very bright because it was very bright. We can turn that off and back on to see what that looks like. And before we deal with this blue hazy action, I'm noticing the image is a little green, or at least it just looks a little green. I'd rather it be a little warmer and a uh, less warm slash green. So I'm going to fix that by turning on our first color curve here. We're gonna go in and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the green on the low end and just drop that a little bit, introduce some more reds into the shadows. And I find that helps warm up the image a lot when you have an overcast shot like this. So that's after, here's before, you can see what that looks like. Now let's deal with this blue haze. And for that, we're gonna be on the color tab, click on the drop down, and I'm going to add a hue saturation curve. Now, different software has different names for this, but these are really powerful curves that we can do some cool stuff. So what I wanna do is make this blue kind of blend into the trees and reduce the saturation. So first, let's change the blue to a green, but I only wanna change this blue. So I'm gonna choose the hue versus hue, grab the little dropper here and select this blue area. Now I can hold down the shift button and grab this point. You can see we can change the color. If I go up, you can see we can make it kind of a yellowish blue. I'm going to actually hold shift and move these points left and right to expand our window, if you will. I'll add another point. And we'll just kind of create this trapezoidal shape. And as you look at the screen there, you can see I am moving it to kind of blend in with the trees. So that's pretty close. Not perfect, but it doesn't really matter because I'm also gonna desaturate it. So now we're going to use the hue versus saturation. I'm going to select that dropper and select the same area. Now I can desaturate the image. We'll again create like a trapezoid. I'll expand these points just a little bit. And that's starting to look pretty good there. So we'll turn this off. There's what it was like before and back on. While we're here, I'm not wild about this green. It looks a little too rich and just not for me. So what I'm going to do is reduce the saturation a little bit and I wanna push it a little more toward yellow um, and just change the look from this super vibrant look. So for that, we're gonna go hue versus hue, grab that green. You can see it creates a new point for us and let's go kind of yellow with it like that, just a little toward yellow. And I'll also grab the hue versus saturation. We'll select the same green and we'll reduce the saturation just a little bit, something like that. So now if I turn this thing off, here was our original shot. I'll turn it back on, and here is the final shot. Again, if you feel like, yikes, I went a little too far, just scroll to the bottom and grab that mix slider, bring it to zero, and bring it up until you find something you like. So that's another example of how to take a shot that has a couple of issues, not only do our normal grade that we've already talked about several times, but also do some custom stuff like these hue versus saturation curves. So that is the system, very straightforward. Here we have yet another shot. I'm gonna go ahead and just do the same thing, base grade, drop it on. Already that looks amazing, but we could go in here and make some further tweaks like our black and white point if we want something real punchy like that. If it's too overexposed, we can go into our second curve here and change the opacity to go from our overexposed original down to something a little more moody in this case. And that is really it, guys. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how to tackle shots like this. And I think it's a great way to go about grading. We're using two LUTs here. You essentially just use sliders to turn things up and down. And once you figure out what you like, you can create presets and very quickly run through edits like this without having to start from scratch every single time. If you'd like to learn more about the LUTs I've used in this video, check the links down in the description. I have a bunch of LUTs I've created for different cameras. And by the way, this is how I monetize this channel. So if you like these videos, consider purchasing some LUTs or some of my camera guides where we talk about things like exposure and all of that fun stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any tips or questions, drop them down in the comments below. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you guys in the next video.